Chapter 12, Flora. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock. Report number 99. Testimony from Randomly Selected Citizen, Ms. Trix Zeffler. Why try to raise funds from the gridlock? Looking in the wrong places. The caves and tunnels are growing. Go look there. All manner of unruly behavior happening there. Trying to disrupt a working gridlock and leaving the deeper places unregulated. Daft. Stupid. I knew it. I reckoned you would be here. Why aren't you answering my texts? Palma asked. She wasn't answering texts because she still felt angry at being entered without her will. Do I need to tell you why? Seriously? What are you doing here? Although it was somewhere late in the afternoon, the conversational noise woke a nearby person in a car. He peered through the window at them. I'm here to help, Palma said, lowering his voice. Hearing that made Flora tense up. I don't need your help. You screwed me over. I can do this on my own, and yes, I'm doing it. I don't need your help. And I'm doing it for my mother, not because you and Esper put me here. Madeira is okay with it? Yes, Palma, she is. And our personal relationship has nothing to do with you. Palma sighed. Okay, well, I got you something anyway in case you needed it. Palma took out a book from his backpack, Mech Maneuvers, Volume 3. Where did you get this? From the library in the penthouses. Remember the one where we used to go to page through picture books of Old Earth? I know the library, but they don't loan these out anymore. How did you get it? Let me just say I am borrowing it outside the system. You stole a book from me? Flora remembered that it is exactly what she used to do. Taking liberties with the books in the library. Palma used to be the one that got nervous about her doing it. She looked back at Palma. He had a sheepish smile on his face. She continued in a frustrated whisper. Are you absurd? See the same shit. You and Esper, take it back. I can't, not yet. Please, just keep it for now. Flora shook her head. She really did need the book. The quality of the online pirated copies was poor. She struggled, but took it. Palma, please... Just give me space. Thank you, but please leave. I can do this on my own. She walked off. Flora, wait. Don't you need a training mech? She stopped in her tracks and realized that by the way he said it, he likely did manage to get a training mech. It would drastically cut down time to find a sponsor. Before she could turn around and respond, Palma kept pushing. I got you two mechs. She wanted so much to just keep walking and leave Palma behind. But she was, as always, curious. Two mechs? Where did you get them? It's a training and a championship mech. I'll tell you more if you come with me. Please, let me help. I'm sorry, but please allow me to make amends. Did Esper help? Does it matter? He did, didn't he? Palma's silence confirmed it. Flora shook her head, her breath shaking. Palma broke the ensuing silence. So? Flora felt her arms tense up as her body fought for and against the offered help. She could keep walking, ostracize her old friend, and do this all herself. Or she could accept the help, tolerate it, and discover just how he and Esper got her a mech. Fine, I'll look, she said, not entirely meeting Palma's gaze. This doesn't change how I feel about what you and Esper did. Flora followed Palma, but tried to avoid his smile as they walked in silence. Flora's mind was all over the place. Frustration and anger at her friends, curiosity about the mechs, and thoughts about her mother. If her mother knew that Palma helped, it would also make her mother happy. She always liked him, a bit like how someone loved a family dog. As they walked through the trunks, Flora continued the conversation. How did you guys get the mechs? They got it for you. Who's they? Esper, Rulo, and Saga. Why? They need some info about the city for a job they're doing, and if I help them, they can get the mechs to you. So they're using you? Yes. Well, no. We're all just trying to help each other. What's wrong with that? I need to seriously remind you, 
you guys try to help people and end up hurting others along the way. You stole a book. I'm now a championship runner. If you don't want to become a hope runner, I'll stop. I'll cancel it. No. Then what's the problem? Flora hesitated for a moment through her mixture of feelings. Nothing. Let's go. They eventually came to an abandoned retail store that looked like it sold shoes in its brighter days. Palma swung open a board to let them through. In the damp, some shoes still lying about, they walked to the fitting rooms. In one of them was a tunnel dug into the ground. They followed it until it met up with what looked like a large, dry drainage pipe. As they came closer, Flora could see where Palma was leading her. It was one of the city's old, giant storm drains, built to hold excess water that never fell anymore due to the anomaly. The walls were coated in graffiti and had burn marks. Either parties were held here or mechs had been melded. Some columns that held up the roof had collapsed, forming what looked like a playground for mechs. Far down below stood three of them, two new ones and an old one. Esper, Rulo, and Saga sat next to it. To the left of the drainage pipe was a series of stairs descending into the cavern. They climbed down, Flora trying to conceal her excitement at seeing the mech. As they walked closer, Esper stood to greet them. Before he could say anything, Flora spoke. Whatever is going on here, I'm still mad at you. I know, but you are here, no? Flora shook her head in disbelief. Still that same ass! Guys, please! Palma interrupted, trying to calm things down. Can we just work together? Hi, Flora. Rulo said, stepping into the conversation. Averting frustrated looks at Esper and Palma, Flora replied friendly. Hey, Rulo, nice to see you again. She turned to Saga and waved. Nice to see you too, Saga. Saga nodded back. I can explain the mechs if you want me to, Rulo asked. Flora scowled at Esper. It was her way to let him know that this didn't change things. She turned to Rulo. Please. So just to make sure you get what's going on, I'll be here to watch over the mechs when you train and make sure the mechanics are working okay. Unfortunately, my coaching days are over. No coaching. Flora nodded. Rulo pointed toward the older mech. Ignore that rust bucket, that's mine. I keep it down here, but it doesn't run or jump these days. When Flora first met Rulo and Saga when they were all teenagers, Rulo couldn't stop talking about getting his own mech one day. While Palma and Flora knew Rulo and Saga, they didn't spend as much time together as a group compared to when they were younger. It thus confused Flora to see Rulo wearing a protective suit, prepared to go into a mech, but not willing to. Why are you wearing shoulder pads then? I like to always be prepared, just in case. But I don't run anymore. Saga answered the question that wasn't asked. He had an accident. Best not to ask more. Flora nodded. Oh, gotcha. I can get into one if I need to. I'm just careful. He pointed to the newer mechs. All right, the other two. This one is your training mech, and this one, if you need to, is your actual championship mech. You would definitely want to use this in the championship. Trust me, it's amazing. Flora smiled at Rulo's excitement as she perused the mechs. It was indeed amazing equipment. New, sleek, and seemed to be modified specifically for championship running. It had extra conduits to manage heat from jet activations. She knew, however, that something was afoot. Palma might try to help because he felt bad, but Esper wouldn't do all of this. Where did you get these mechs? She asked. Esper spoke up. Does it matter? Yes, it matters. You entered me. Do they even know? Yes, Rulo and Saga know. You entered me and didn't tell me. It's perfectly reasonable to be skeptical at this stage. Did Palma tell you how and why we got them? Esper asked. Palma shook his head. Esper continued. We all need each other here at this moment. These mechs were given to us, and the owner will be paid handsomely if we get the job done. So everyone wins. A job? What's this job you guys are doing? Esper exchanged glances at Rulo and Saga. He was in thought. I will tell you, but you have to promise me not to share any of this. That piqued Flora's interest. But she knew this was also Esper's way to get her consent. Flora nodded hesitantly. We're working with Mason to figure out a way to manipulate the public car markets in his favor. Palma will help us get into the Mech Institute servers. We're starting there. 
Flora's mind raced back to the day as a young teenager when she found her mother sobbing around the ornate kitchen table in their apartment in the skies. They lost almost everything in the market. Shortly after, they began their new lives in the open streets below the apartment they once had, resorting to living in an old bus and taxi. Flora started working odd jobs immediately after to help support her mother. Her heart started beating faster. Touching the public car markets in any capacity brought back guilt. Are you insane? And cause more people to lose money? Why? No, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Flora wanted to walk away. If others lost money like her mother did, then this would all be pointless. Flora, please, Saga said. Flora didn't expect her to be the one to convince her to accept the gifts. Please. For us, growing up in the trunks, never even having seen a penthouse's apartment, this could be life-changing money for us. We are taking an enormous risk by working for Mason. We all know this, and we know we might give him more control and power. For so many years, we've groveled like rats down here, eating scraps thrown out by others. This will allow us to leave. Please, we need you, and you need us. Flora's heart got stuck on the phrase, this will allow us to leave. It was just like herself, watching the sunset fall, yearning for the answers in the glowing orange sun on the horizon. Saga just wanted to leave, to go somewhere. For Flora, having known what life was like in the penthouses and the trunks, leaving meant leaving the entire city. For Saga, however, leaving just meant being able to see the sunsets and the storms at all. Flora sighed and bowed her head. I know what that feels like. I'll do it, but no more games, okay? It ends here. Esper, Palma, it ends now. No more helping without telling me what's going on. I want to know. Saga smiled as Esper and Palma nodded. There was silence for a few moments until Rulo pumped his fists. Great. Shall we go over some basics of the mechs? Flora came closer to the mech and saw her reflection in it. Despite her confusion, she had never seen mechs such as these so close. Marvelous machinery. All right, here's a suit for you, Rulo said, throwing her some pads. You can get in and I'll just dictate the basics in case you aren't familiar with the new mechs. What's the last model you used? I haven't been in one. Ha ha, good one. Flora pursed her lips. It's not a joke. I've never been in a mech. I'm an expert in the simulators, so this should be a piece of cake. How do you get in this one? Oh God, what the hell? Esper, you didn't tell us this. There's no way this mech will come back in one piece. Rulo said as he looked to Esper for answers. Relax, Flora knows what she's doing. It'll be okay, Esper answered. You know what these mechs can do. You know what can happen to people. This isn't some game, Rulo replied. Flora interjected. Guys, I can do this, but I'll take it slow. You can trust me. Rulo sank, his shoulder pads drooping with him. Just please, please, please be careful. We need to return these in the best, if not mint, condition. Rulo showed Flora how to get in. She plugged herself in, her arms and legs held by the surrounding machine. As it turned on, the controls lit up in front of her face, displayed on the transparent dome in front of her. It felt almost exactly like the simulator. Before Rulo could talk on how to engage the thrusters, she boosted herself a few inches off the ground. The machine was vibrating in tune with her soul, resonating with her dreams and promises. She could give her mother the redemption she sought, and she could find her own answers. Why were they all alone? What happened to her father? What was he protecting them from? What happened to Armin? Frizen rippled across her body as dust sprayed everywhere below her. The mech's jets suddenly oscillated out of control, but she managed to land safely with a hard thud. Whoa, 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 what the hell? Calm down! Rulo shouted, coughing some dust away. Flora grinned. Her new reality was finally settling in like the dust around her. This was actually happening. <laughs>